Simone, having a statue unveiled of you here in your hometown, what does it mean to you? Uh, I mean, it means a lot. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around, you know, what's happening. Everyone is excited. Um, obviously, so many people here in Baton Rouge have followed my career since bitty ball days. So this is like the celebration for everyone, not just myself, um, because so many people were involved in, 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 in this journey. And so I'm just thankful that, you know, it's happening. You know, Coach Walker did an amazing job of getting this done in less than a year. Um, and here we are, um, January 15th, Alumni Weekend. You know, it's one of the biggest days that you can think of um, as far as women's basketball. We got these ladies here that are sitting here 17 and 0. So it's, it's, it's awesome to just think about what this moment is going to mean for everyone. It's about uh, so over the last 40 years, so much of LSU's, LSU's athletic success has been the success of its female athletes and, and, and teams. Do you feel like, as the first female, former female athlete to get a statue, do you feel like you're kind of representing some of the track athletes and the gymnasts and the tennis players and things like that, that, that is all, they're all a little part of this as well? Yeah. I didn't do this alone. Like a lot of um, the female athletes, the student athletes from my time was inspiration. I remember going to watch Lolo Jones and Mona Lee and all those track runners, um, you know, practice um, daily just to see them just get into the training element and watch their mentality as far as their approach, you know, to their, their races um, because we're all kind of going through our own race and our own journey. And so I do stand here proudly, you know, as a representation of, of all those women during that time because it was so many great uh, female athletes athletes that have come through LSU that have made statements in their in their respective sports that um, often go unnoticed and you know being the first one to be recognized uh, for my talents and and my gifts you know I have to say that I I have to honor them as well and and what they've done and um, be thankful that I won't be the last one that will you know obviously be acknowledged. Hey Simone uh, I I ran to your dad the other day Uh and he said (laughs) He said one of the messages he wanted to get out or you want to get out or collectively you all want to get out was you want to reach out to the kids of Baton Rouge and tell them that this is possible too, that you can you can be like me, you can succeed. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, after traveling around the world, uh, it's not many of us out there, Louisianians, that are, um, you know, doing great things. So I want to be a great representation for the young, pl- young, young people here. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Um, I started here right at Gushong Center and break recreational facilities, you know, bouncing a basketball, and that led me to places that I could never even imagine. And so, you know, with the right work ethic, with the right amount of perseverance and the right mentality and uh, the right amount of sacrifice, you know, many things are possible, and I'm living proof of that. What is it about doing this here in Baton Rouge at Capitol High winning two state titles coming to LSU going to four straight final fours what does it say about you doing it in your hometown you know home is where the heart is and it was very very hard during those times to even think about staying home and you think about the state of women's basketball and where it was and you know Tennessee being at the top with the three meeks and that legendary program and the rivalry between them and Connecticut and what that created as far as like your mindset and your thought process of where you wanted to go and what was going to lead you and give you the best possible advantage to get to the next level Um, but to go against the grain and kind of bet on yourself and do it your own way stay at home and kind of grind it out with players that I grew up playing against and with, you know, with Tamika Johnson and Ronnie Kadonika Hodges. I just felt like the things that they were doing resonated most with me. And being at home, it gave my family, my friends, my supporters, you know, another four years to really let me become who I needed to become to then go out into the world and accomplish things that were even greater than what I was able to do here. Simone, did uh, when Kim got hired, did she contact you to to be part of her staff, or or did y'all have any conversations about that? We've had a number of conversations. You know, uh, Coach Markey obviously is one of the greatest coaches, you know, in our time. You know, as an assistant, as a head, as a player, she knows the game through and through. And you know, obviously, it'll be a great opportunity. You know, if that if that opportunity came about, um, but. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out coaching and, and what's best, uh, you know, in the next situation for me. But obviously, Coach Moki has done amazing things over the past, not even two years, for this program, for this for this community here. And um, we want to continue to see it. And, and real quick, I want to also get your thoughts, just what you've seen out of Angel Reese. Uh, Ooh, she's she's done some <laughs> – she's done a couple of things in her short stint here. Uh, and also – 
was it hard seeing your team's you know program best record of you know start go out like just talk about what this team and especially Angel too kind of what she's been able yeah, to yeah that's what records are for is to be broken if records are being broken that means the game is being elevated and it's great to see that our game is being elevated after knowing where our program has been and where it's heading um, as far as Angel. I mean, she made me feel old and happy all in one, <laughs> all in one day with the pitcher. Um, but it's it's like coaches always say, you never know who's watching, and that pitcher kind of symbolized that as a as a pro athlete. I was like, I want to make sure I give autographs or pictures to you know some of the younger younger people that's in the crowd, and not knowing that this day would come. But thankful that this day is here because Ms. Reese is now a Tiger and the performances that she's been putting on. I mean, think about the players at her position, uh, Sylvia Files, who had the double-double record until she just previously broke it. So it says a lot about where the game is and where it's going and what she's been doing. Uh, obviously, if you've been following her, she did an amazing job at, at Maryland as well, but her numbers are through the roof here. And um, I hope to continue to see that as we go through the season um, and we push forward because I know they have some big goals ahead of them. Simone, when they're not putting statues up for you, how often have you been able to get back to Baton Rouge through your career? And second, do you plan, like when your coaching career is over, do you want to come back here and establish something permanent? Oh, I'm always trying to get home whenever I can. That's the best food in the, in the world now since I've traveled the world. It's the best food, and no one can argue with me about that. Um, but definitely, I'm always trying to come home and give back and do things in the community, try, you know, different tournaments, different uh, free throw competitions, like stuff that just can kind of, you know, rally the youth around. But I'm definitely looking to come back home. Cost of living is a lot cheaper here <laughs> than it is in other places. So um, anytime or whenever, you know, I do something slow down, I'm going to lay roots here in Baton Rouge. Uh, I know you've talked about Coach Gunner many times, but it seems like it's appropriate to talk about her now, especially with this, with your statue going up uh, as a coach that recruited you and coached you and, and whatnot. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> I can't say enough about, you know, Coach Gunner. I was just speaking in the last interview, and I was saying that, you know, she, they were the first um, – program that even contacted me they knew the secret before anybody else before I became a national um, you know player of the year and all that like I remember my first letter from them was from coach Starkey coach Gunner and it was handwritten and that matters because it signaled it signaled to me that they cared enough to take the time to write a handwritten letter when I received so many other letters that were typed and it was like you could take my name off and put someone else's name on it it was still you know, be the same, it would still have the same effect. But a personalized letter on stats or career or grades, like knowing what my report card said that year, um, you know, really meant a lot. But then after coming here, Coach Gunner basically was like a mother to us all. Um, it wasn't a day that went by we couldn't come to the office. It wasn't a day that went by that we couldn't go to her house. Um, and speaking of, she had some of the best breakfast that I could think of. Um, and she, you know, it, her house was our house. We would go to her house and tell us we, we were going to watch the Roy Jones fight at her house and she better have paid for it and had some snacks and everything waiting for us. And she would be like, okay, cool, lock my door. Lock my door when you leave, you know. Um, but she created this environment. She created the, the mantra that we live by, dream big, work hard. And the, the biggest part of that mantra was no excuses. I'd never seen her make an excuse other than when her golf cart wasn't charged up and she couldn't get around campus. But, um, you know, she was the driving force, um, you know, in everything that we did even up until her last season. What are some of your favorite memories from those four LSU teams? Oh, man. Obviously, the New Orleans Final Four. I remember getting uh, – um, you know, the, 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 the officers assisted us all the way to New Orleans, and we sung to the top of our lungs. We were uh, singing Usher. That's when the Usher album came out, and we sung that album to the top of our lungs. But, you know, getting into that arena and seeing the purple and the gold flying in that arena, I remember pulling up to the uh, hotel, and one of the, the staff members forgot she was at work and started second lining. And <laughs> She tore it up, you know, as we entered the um, the hotel. But there's many, um, you know, many different moments that I can remember from, you know, hitting a shot against Georgia to get us to the Final Four. Trinell Gavlel, you know, making 10 points in that particular game. Wendelin Jones getting the, the rebound to seal the deal, the charge against Stanford. Um, I mean, you name it, 
that we can probably go through history and it's just like any moment that we can pull out. What do you remember from playing against Kim Mulkey and kind of Uh-oh. her team? Uh oh. You know what? That team was always tough. You know, defensively strong minded. Um, we we were always ready to play them, but it the energy was always through the roof. Um, you know, the teams were so fit young, how physical they were. They never gave up. They fought to the end, and that's something that we always respected. And you have to understand, that's the type of player Coach Smokey was. That's the type of player that I grew up watching her when she played at La Tech. Like, we all know the, the two braids and, you know, the feistiness that she um, displayed when she played, and that's what her teams were, were like. And so um, – you know, it's just kind of bittersweet because she got that, that championship on us. But um, if anybody was going to get a championship on us, I, I'm not mad that it was her. Earlier I asked Coach Mulkey about, I had read an article that she said she regretted not getting you, but she felt like Louisiana Tech was never really in the hunt because she knew you were going to stay home. What does that mean to you? I know. I remember going down. I came down out of camp, right? It was uh, her and Christy Curry were there at uh, La Tech, and I went to the camp, and it was just like, it was a little bit too country for me. <laughs> but it was Louisiana Tech, and like I said, I grew up watching, you know, her playing uh, with Teresa Weatherspoon, Leon Balmore, the coach, and, you know, we all know what they did for women's basketball during that time, and so you have to honor that, you know, you have to respect it, and and, uh, you know, take that trip and actually let them make their pitch and, you know, walk on that campus because you never really know, you know, until you get on that campus what feeling you're going to feel. Um, but it wasn't for me. It was home was where the heart is, um, and obviously she knew she had an uphill battle, but they put up a valiant effort to try to keep me there. So there was always much respect there. Yeah, Simone, um, this is M.A. Vogel from ESPN.com. I, I was wondering um, two things. If you could talk about just your impressions of this year's team um, and, and what you've seen of them so far. And then also, if you talk about for your generation of players, um, what it means to have honors like this, um, to, to have a statue, because your generation of players, you know, has really built the WNBA to what it is. Okay. Um, as far as this year's team, I mean, they've been playing amazing. It's been a it's been a journey to see them, you know, from the first game to now. Obviously, everyone's a little bit worried when you get into SEC play because of the SEC and the powerhouse teams that they have. But it's been great to see them come together and certain players step up and do what they they've been doing. Um, it's been great to see how they've reacted to Coach Mulkey and her intensity as a coach and not, you know. Um, and it's rising to the occasion. Even last night, I was just talking to him, <laughs> laughing about him. Like, um, my girl right here missed a couple free throws at the end. I'm like, come on, you got to tighten that up. <laughs> tighten that up. But it was great to see that. Give me a heart attack. Y'all give me a heart attack. I'm going to tell y'all that now. Y'all give me a heart attack from time to time. Um, y'all let them cut that 18-point lead down to about four or five. But I like how y'all bounce back. And so that's what it's really all about. I, obviously, everybody's waiting to see that South Carolina matchup. Obviously, I am, I am too. But I want them to continue to get better. I want them to continue to enjoy because it looks like y'all really are having fun with one another. Y'all really picking each other up. And that's what it's going to be about as you continue to push forward to the NCAA tournament and other areas. So continue to lift each other, continue to have each other's back as you go on this journey together. Um, as for the generation of players that I play with, that I played with, I always say I didn't do it alone. I remember a number of times here at LSU where I was like, oh, my God, what did I sign up for? Um, conditioning, Bob. Look, Bob got to chuckle himself. The amount of conditioning, do y'all do that? Like, we, y'all do the suicide on the football field? <laughs> really? We're going to have to have a conversation about what y'all are doing around here. But, um, you know, we <laughs> – oh, oh. Y'all don't do no conditioning? No. But we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> oh, but no. Um, you know, the players that I had coming in here, they 
understood the expectations that were placed upon us and they we pushed each other every day it wasn't a day that went by and the staff knew it too and they knew that they could get the best out of us by challenging us individually but collectively as a team and so we were able to just kind of withstand and um you know compete and do things that we didn't even think we could do like some of the stuff that we did we kind of laugh about it i talked to tamika not too long ago and she was like did you ever think we would ever you know, win SEC and do this and make it to the Final Four this many times and win these. I'm like, no, girl, I didn't think we was going to do it, but we did it. And so it was amazing just to be able to to share those moments with players that, like I said before, I grew up playing against and um, to be able to come together and be a part of Louisiana history and LSU's history is, is amazing. Thank you. Um, Zoe? Oh, I thought I was next. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, my name is Zoe Collins-Rath with The Advocate. Um, Simone, with you being the first woman at LSU to get a statue, are there any other women that you would like to see get a statue that'll be right next to yours? I think Coach uh, Coach Didi is getting one, right? Or conversations surrounding the gymnast, the gymnastics coach. I used to love to watch, um, you know, the gymnastics team during that time. Um, she did an amazing job. Obviously, you can see our, our gymnastics team is still doing a great job now. Um, Sylvia Files. <laughs> I, I don't think I need to go into any explanations on Sylvia. Um, who else? A number of track athletes. We can go down the list of, of, of people that we can just pull. Our, traf our track team has actually been probably one of the most successful programs in our, in our history. When you think about it, the amount of national championships, individual or collectively as a team. Um, I mean, you name it, we have a number of people that could be celebrated. And I think it's just a matter of um, us going through the history books and, and, and pulling people out and making sure they get the, the recognition that they deserve. Thank you. Hey, Simone, congratulations. This is Christina Williams with Girls Talk Sports TV and MSG Networks. Um, my question for you is, Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you went out for a half a second. Oh, okay. When you think about your legacy and its totality with this program, um, what would you say your legacy is in your own words? And then also, what are some of your keys to um, success? Man, I would hope that someone else can describe my legacy. Like, for me to have to put a word on it, I don't, I, right now, I can't really put one word to what my legacy means you know, to not just to myself, but to everyone, I think I would let tomorrow, I think it'll be a lot of conversation and, and, and they'll have better conversations around what that word is as far as describing my legacy. Um, what was the second part of your question? Um, what are some of your keys to um, having such a great success over your career as a, as a basketball player? Um, work ethic. It's not a day that goes by that I'm not thinking about how I can get better, you know, and I'm now in coaching, I'm like reading books on YouTube, studying the greats, um, watching film, um, figuring out what my philosophies are going to be or what, what, uh, you know, what my system is going to be, things like that. And it was the same way as a player. It wasn't a day that went by that I wasn't thinking about what I could add to my game, because as you know, every year, um, you know, in sports, you have to be a different player. You can't come back. It, the, the scouting, the technology, it's too advanced for you to be the same player. You have to add something to your game. So every year, whether it was conditioning or a mentality that I needed to have or a shot or a move or, you know, footwork or whatever it was, I just conditioned myself to believe that this is what needs to happen, this is what will happen, and this is what's going to happen in order for me to accomplish my goals. I've never been a person that sat down and really wrote out my goals. I just knew what it was that I needed to do. I would look at other people and I'd say, mm, I think I could do, I could do that more times than her, <laughs> you know? It was a competition thing for me, and I was um, hoping to be like one of the top competitors that people have ever competed against. I think we're good, Grant. Yeah. Woo -woo. Oh, I'm saying. Uh oh. Yeah, we got some. We got some talking to do. They ain't, yeah, they ain't. They ain't doing no running. What they doing, coach? We'll talk later. Okay.
<laughs> they jumping rope. <laughs> uh, if you have a question, we'll get a mic. Bob, how, I, I don't recall exactly how much were you involved in, in Simone's recruitment throughout and and at what age were you able to see what a special player she could she could well, become? I certainly wasn't the primary recruiter, but when you have a player like Simone, everybody's on board. I mean, you know, whether it's a letter from your athletic director or, I mean, you know, everybody was involved. The first time you saw Simone play, whether she was in junior high or high school, you knew she was special. I mean, she's, she's that kind of player. She's, you know, some players you need to watch two or three times. The first time you see her, you're like, it's a no-brainer. She's special. She's iconic. She's different. She just asks to kind of highlight her career and what she means to LSU. Can you do that? It is really hard to sum up what she means, not just to our women's basketball program, not to our school, but to the entire community. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, I think Skip Bertman summed it up the most when he said she was the most influential recruit in the history of Louisiana State University athletics. I mean, that's a powerful statement. I think it's true. Uh, she changed the culture of our program uh, by being a great competitor every single day in practice. I mean, people ask me my favorite Simone moments. It's practice. It's not games. Practices were amazing, and it's because she set the, she set the temperature every day. Bob, obviously with the men's program here as well, been around some, some other uh, players that have statues already erected, but – when you talk about how a player affects their teammates around them, how would you best describe how Simone did that, not only at practice but also in games as well? Well, you know, they, th they say leadership is uh, the example you set, and she said it in everything she did. I mean, uh, from her, her practice, her work ethic, what she did in the offseason, the unrequired work, her preparation, film study, the weight room. I mean, she was absolutely – obsessed with being great and she understood all the elements that went into that and uh, she just didn't make the players better she made the coaches better we had to elevate the way we were teaching the way we were coaching because we never coached anybody like her before and and then it was the way she did it I mean you know it was was the way she she opens up to the community um, it's 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 the way she signs autographs. It's the the way she's with other people. I mean, you know, and it's not her favorite thing to do. She's a, she's a private person, uh, but she understands that role and goes about because she understands the responsibility that comes with greatness. Coach, everyone's looking for the next. You know, it's been two decades. That there really hasn't been anybody like her since. Right? There'll never be another. There'll be great players, don't get me wrong. She said records are made to be broke. But there will never be another Simone Augustus, not at LSU. I mean, she was, she was, she was homegrown here. Uh, that's what makes it different. A lot of great players go to schools, but she, she was born and raised here. And she understands and loves Baton Rouge and the community and understands the culture as well as anybody. So, uh, I will, I will never forget that, that April day when she signed. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but we did not know she was signing with us. So we're sitting in Coach Gunner's office in front of the TV, uh, watching the local news like every other basketball fan, waiting to see if we got her, if she was going to that school up north. And she popped out of the damn gymnasium wearing orange. And I will not repeat what Coach Gunner said. <laughs> But when she, when she announced LSU, I, I can't describe how it felt to us because we knew. We knew we just didn't get a, a great player. We just knew our program was getting ready to change forever. You, you were around the former Chris Jackson, Mahmoud abdul Arwoof. Is there kind of some parallels? There, there hadn't been anybody like him since either. Well, the thing that I, I could tell you about Mahmoud is she, he had uh, – he was very intentional and deliberate about everything he did, especially his off-season workouts, and, and that's what Simone was. 
Uh, she just had an incredible uh, dedication and commitment to being the best that she could be. And, and it's, it's, it's so hard to describe uh, to people that don't understand because when I say that, I know everybody's thinking about the jump shot. But I've never coached a player that moved without the basketball better. By the time she was a senior, she was the best screener on our team. She was an excellent defender. We didn't always put her on the other team's best because we didn't want to get her in foul. There was nothing that she, she didn't drive herself to do incredibly well. If she couldn't make jump shots, she still would have been a heck of a player. Everybody talks about greatness on the court, but not a lot of greatness off the court, and she kind of emulates that, and it shines. What have you seen from her? Well, again, uh, she understands the responsibility that comes with it, and not all superstars do. Uh, I was going to share this story, and I will share it tomorrow. The very first time I saw Simone Augustus in person was at the River Center on Thanksgiving Day when she was in high school passing out meals to the less fortunate. Uh, she's always been that kind of person. She, she cares about people. Uh, she cares about this community. Yesterday in the office, we, we pulled up the, the Rio de Janeiro press conference uh, after she won the gold medal and dedicated the gold medal to uh, all the people in Baton Rouge during the 2016 floods. Uh, there, there's, there's nobody like her.